stay safe, stay active and stay healthy. <laughs>
Good. Yeah, try to do one big push and run after it. Try and do lots of little pushes, keeping close control. Awesome. Okay. Once your children have got a new idea of pushing with one and both hands, we're then going to call out a body part. Okay. So you're going to push the ball with your hands, then I'm going to call out a body part. Whatever body part I call, you're going to touch that body part on the ball. So, for example, if you're pushing the ball around and I say tummies, you're going to put your tummy on top of the ball. Okay, so be ready and listen really carefully to whatever body parts I call. Off you go. Push in that equipment. Foot. Awesome. Off you go again. Pushing. Left knee. See if the children can remember, work out their left and their right sides of their body. Good try. Try and balance just on your left knee. And off you go again. Pushing. Bottoms. Can you put your bottom on the ball and stay balanced? Good stuff. Carry on pushing. Right elbow. Good. And carry on pushing. Noses. Good stuff. And carry on pushing. Can you put your chin on the ball? Good, and freeze it there. So there's loads of different body parts that you can call out there so the children get to know and identify the different names. And if you call left or right shoulder, for example, the children then start to learn the left and right sides of the body as well as having a go at pushing and manipulating their equipment. Okay, a little bit of fun, Zampi. You're going to leave the ball on the floor and you've got to go to the ball with your body. So if you stand facing the ball, you know the nursery rhyme, head, shoulders, knees, toes. Okay, so go closer to your ball. You can't pick the ball up and see if you can go head, shoulder, knee, toe on the ball as quick as you can. Off you go. No, the head, that's it, head, shoulder, knee and toe. Stand up. So, good, as well as more, how quickly can you do it? Head, shoulder, knee, toe, head, shoulder, <laughs> knee, <laughs> and yeah. toe, good stuff. Okay, we're now gonna move on to our next pushing activity. And for this one, you will need something that you're going to push the ball um, with. So we're going to use a cricket bat because obviously it's a striking and fielding lesson. So ideally, if we've got a cricket bat, bat, we're going to use it. But obviously, we're working inside, so we're only going to be pushing it very, very gently. If you haven't got a cricket bat, you could possibly use a broom or maybe even a frying pan as your cricket bat. OK, so Zanthi, can you stand up holding your cricket bat? Now, when we hold our cricket bats or whatever it is we're using, if it's got a flat side like this cricket bat, the flat side has got to be the side touching the ball or the rolled up sock, whatever it is you're pushing. So if you stand, making sure the flat side is touching whatever you're going to push. OK, and you need two hands on your handle, whether that's your frying pan or your cricket bat. And the hand that you write with has got to be lowest down, okay? So it's the Dunphy, she writes with her right hand, so she's going to have her right hand lower down mm -hmm. and her left hand at the top of the handle. Right, Dunphy. And it's up to you, which ball would you like to have a go at pushing with your cricket bat? Okay, she's chosen the smaller ball. It might be a little bit easier if you went for a bigger ball. So she's going to have a go at just gently pushing the ball using her cricket bat around the space. Good stuff. And obviously try it at walking speed first before you try and go too quick. <laughs> Good. And remember little touches, little pushes, just like you would do with your hands, because you don't want to whack it really hard, particularly if you're working in an inside space. So let's have another look, Zanthi. Push in. Bend your knees a little bit and make sure the ball and the bat is out to the side of your body if you can. Good stuff. Okay, we're now going to put some obstacles in. So I've got four coloured cones. If you haven't got cones at home, you could use cushions, you could use books, you could use cuddly toys as obstacles. So we're going to put those out around the space. And that is going to carry on pushing using her back, but she's not allowed to touch her obstacles. So see if she can go and manipulate her back and her ball around the obstacles. Good job, Zanthi. 
making sure we're always looking at the ball and looking where we are going. Good stuff. Have you touched any obstacles yet? No? Doing a good job then at pushing? Okay, and freeze it there. And obviously you can encourage the children to go a little bit quicker as they get confident. Okay, this time we're going to try and not only push, but we're going to be trying to look up to go to the correct colour. So we've got four different colour codes, red, blue, yellow and green. If you haven't got four different objects, maybe they could be four... Um, Four different coloured objects, sorry, maybe they could be four different objects, and they could be four different coloured toys, or a cushion, a book, a water bottle, um, and a slipper, whatever it might be. Okay, so we're going to use four colours, so Xanthi is going to push her ball as quick as she can to the colour that I call. I'm going to space these out a little bit, Xanthi, so people can see. Okay, you're going to begin in the middle of your space. When you get there, just wait until I call out the next colour. Red. So push the ball to the red and then stay there. Nice close control. Yellow. So look up, see where your target is. Push it to yellow. Good stuff. Blue. Red. So it's quite hard to manipulate that bat and that ball, so it might take the children a little bit of time. Green. Good. That was nice and fast. Blue. Again, encouraging the children to do little pushes rather than one big whack and run after it. Otherwise, they're not going to get close to their target. Red. Yellow. Always make sure the flat side, if you're using a bat, is touching your ball, closest to the ball. Good stuff. Green. Brilliant job. Okay. Right, and hopefully this as well will help the children to remember where those different objects are or where those different colours are. So after they've had a few goes at pushing towards them, they might remember where the red cone is or where the pink cuddly toy is, etc. Hi, welcome back. This is our last pushing activity. So you will need to continue using the ball, whichever size ball you were using before, and your bat. And Athena this time, who's in reception, is going to have a go at pushing the ball with her bat. And she's going to try it with the bat and with the frying pan to show that your reception children can do this. And I'm going to be rolling the ball gently along the floor. She's going to watch it really carefully, get her body behind the ball and attempt to push it back to me using the flat side of her bat or her frying pan. So Athena, do you want to stand in that position? Good, bring your feet a little bit closer and move back a tad for me. Okay, and I'm going to roll it gently, you're going to watch it with your eyes and then attempt to push it with your bat, but just gently because we're inside. Good, so really watch that ball. Good, good try. Oh, unlucky, just went slightly under your back. It's a bit, a bit of a big back for you. Try and stand up a little bit more, Athena. That's it. Okay, watch the ball. Good one. Hey, right, shall we try with the frying pan as well? Because not everybody at home might have a, a cricket bat. So exactly the same. If you're using a frying pan, make sure the back, the bottom of the frying pan is facing the ball. Right, bring it down a little bit lower. Ready? Yay, good push. Good one. Excellent. And if they're getting really good at it, you could start to put two targets to see if they can hit through the middle of the target. So not only can they push it, but they can also push it in the right place. They're being really accurate with their pushing. Right, little fun thing to finish. If you're using the frying pan or if you're using the bat, see if you can balance the ball on the back. <laughs> Shall we try it with the frying pan? Yeah. Maybe yeah. this way. <laughs> so it's a bit like it's an egg on the plate. See if you can walk this way, Athena, so we can see you. <laughs> can you keep your egg inside your frying pan? Doing a good job at balancing there and spinning and turning at the same time. Awesome. That's easy with the frying pan. Do you want to try it with the cricket bat? You have to be really careful at balancing this time. You might need two hands. Right. Oh, keep it flat. 
Wow, that's a tricky one, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on pushing and striking a fielding. We're going to carry on looking at pushing and some floor tennis in our fourth lesson of tennis later on this week. So hopefully you'll tune into that too. And remember, stay safe, stay active, stay healthy. <laughs>